All right, hey you guys, doing a movie retrospective. Yeah. Going back to some 50s sci-fi. We yeah. don't do a lot of that yeah. on this show. 50s sci-fi, man, you're always risking it. Right? <laughs> this is one of the better ones. I mean, not as good as, you know, like in uh, Forbidden Planet. But okay, it's pretty good. It's yeah, I kind of like, feel like this is maybe a B or C tier yeah. uh, as far as like the 50s go. Yeah. But I love the gimmick yeah. and I love the monster. Yeah. Uh, I had well, been wanting, several of them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, you know the monster I'm talking yeah. about. The one that was on the cover of the Misfits album. Yeah. <laughs> my dad, that one. My dad showed me this to me, uh, showed this to me when I was a kid on, on television. Yeah. And yeah, that's my first, that must have been way back in the 70s. I was probably about six, seven, maybe eight. And... Uh, that was probably about six or seven. It scared me. I can this see one, that. This, yeah, this one scared me. The I dude see got that. absorbed by the damn jellyfish. That's fucked up if you think big, about it. Yeah, the big spider rat and everything. And but my dad loved this movie when he was a kid. <laughs> this was like the best thing going. Yeah, this came when out in kid, uh, yeah. 1959. Yeah. Uh, and it's called The Angry Red Planet. Yeah. Uh, I think it initially was supposed to be called Invasion of Mars. And yeah. I've also seen it called Journey to Planet 4. But I think most people know it's the Angry Red Planet. The, the original version, I think, was in black and white. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, now, the, the scenes that they shot on Mars, because yeah. this has kind of like a gimmick, which a lot of 50s sci-fi did, called Cinemagic. Yeah. Um, where I'll kind of describe it in a little bit as much as I like understand what they did. But all the scenes on Mars were shot in black and white because that was cheaper. But the stuff where they were inside the spacecraft and on Earth and shit like that, that was all, like, color. That okay. was, like, Technicolor. So, okay. yeah, because I was watching it the whole time, and I'm like, wait, was this whole thing shot in black and white? And then it was colorized later, because I said it doesn't look like it was colorized. But it was, like, all the Earth shit was uh, was actually originally shot in color. It was okay. just the Mars shit it was black that white. was shot in black and white, and then they did a process on it to... to make it red. To tint it red. Okay, I got you. Yeah. I thought the whole thing, because I mean, I've seen a lot of stills from this movie in black and white, and I thought it was a black and white movie. I thought it had been colorized, modern. I thought so too, yeah, but it, it's like hard to modern. tell. Right. It looks okay. Yeah, I mean, I thought it looked pretty nice, to be yeah. honest with you, like the color and stuff. For the time, it was it was pretty good. I, yeah. And, uh, now, you know, we're not, like I said, this is maybe B or C tier. This isn't Forbidden Planet. I mean, Forbidden Planet is fucking top notch. I mean, that's... Better than an old Star Trek episode, the way it is. You know, some people say that's not saying much, but for Red Planet, it looked really good. What are you talking it, about? Old Star Trek episodes were off. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, shit, that was the Star Wars of the day for Forbidden Planet. It, it looks good. The last time I saw it, it still looked good. Yeah, we should probably get around good. to doing that one because I yeah. do want to get into doing more 50s sci-fi. Like, it's not my favorite genre. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of bad 50s sci-fi because yeah. of being, uh, you know, an MST fan and they do a lot of uh, 50s sci-fi. I don't think they ever did this one. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... I would say top-notch 50s, War of the Worlds, and there's that goddamn phone. <laughs> I would say be War of the Worlds and, and Forbidden Planet. It's, oh yeah, definitely. And I don't think anybody would argue with you on that score. Day Earth stood still. That's yeah, good that's a writing. good one too. Yeah, but that's more about writing than it is sci-fi. Or excuse me, about, uh, more about writing than it is special effects. Well, and I kind of feel like the problem too, and this uh, movie suffers from it a tad also, is that 50 sci-fi, usually it was marketed toward kids. Uh, yeah. So it was cheap. Like they yeah. produced them kind of cheaply. And so it's like they would have one really cool gimmick or really cool monster or really cool scene or something like that. And then they had to pad out the rest of the runtime with stuff that wasn't that expensive to film. Talking. So it's, yeah, it's going to be like people offices. standing around in rooms talking to one another <laughs> about the problem that they're solving. Yeah. And uh, this one totally does have that, I will say. Yeah. This movie, it's not that long. I think it's, uh, there's a couple different cuts of it. Yeah. Like, one of them is 84 minutes, one of them is 87 minutes. But I will say, like, the first, I don't even know if it's the first half, but, like, the first third of it is pretty slow. It takes them, like, a while I mean, for a while, they're just kind of, like, wandering around in the rocket ship, like, yeah. before they actually get out and, like, get on Mars and all the crazy, yeah. like, interesting shit starts to happen. And the rocket ship is not impressive. Well, I it's... think what they did, and I saw this in other movies, too, like, yeah. I think I saw, also saw this in Phantom Planet, which I can't remember what year that came out. I think it might have been a couple years before this, but that one was in black and white. I think they just draw, like, little cartoons of rocket ships and then, like, you know, kind of put them over the cell, like an animation yeah. cell type situation. Interestingly, too, in this movie, Angry Red Planet, 
all the shit you see on Mars was all like hand drawn. Okay. That yeah. was one of the um that was one of the things that was supposed like cinemagic is that oh we found this super cheap way to film like this sci-fi kind of shit is like basically they'll do the backgrounds like you would do an animated film and then you would just kind of like lay the actors over it kind of thing you know what i'm saying yeah. and then because this one was like tinted and they actually they fucked it up that it didn't come out the way they were intending mm. but they thought it looked cool so they're like all right fuck it <laughs> you know what i mean because yeah. it came out okay uh but yeah so there was that now this was directed by ib melchior now i knew that name He's actually a Danish writer, and he worked on a bunch of sci-fi, I think. Um, probably one of the ones that I remember seeing his name on was Reptilicus, that Danish Godzilla movie. Yeah. They did that on MST yeah. also. That was not bad. A, not a great movie. Yeah. Not terrible, though, um, I will say. Stale. Yeah, was it was a little... Uh, a little stale. Yeah. He also, I think probably his best known one other than this is probably Robinson Crusoe on Mars, which actually... I remember liking that. Yeah, I which I think forever. a lot of people did. I think yeah. a lot of people did. I haven't seen it in a long time. So basically the story, what happens in Angry Gra Angry Angry Gray Planet? I almost yeah, said. Yeah. <laughs> the Angry Purple Planet. I don't yeah. fucking know. Angry Red Planet. We were to because uh, Pookie was watching this with us, so we kept like teasing her that the planet was full of angry red pookies. Yeah, angry red pookies. <laughs> and she, she was, was watching it. She was watching it because yeah. I think the I think the the rat bat spider monster kind yeah. of freaked her out a little bit. She's, She's like, like what? what the fuck is that? Because her little ears flat. Yeah, she saw saw the eyes and the the face. <laughs> She sees faces and stuff. She knows She's what like, they are. what's that thing? It looks yeah. like a big giant mousey, but yeah. mean. Uh, but yeah, so basically what you have, I didn't realize you remembered this. I didn't because I don't think I'd ever seen this movie because you saw it as a kid with your dad. Yeah. Is a lot of this movie is actually told in flashback. Right. I kind of wish they hadn't done that because, you know, now you know that like, well, at least two of the people are going to survive, right? You know, everybody, yeah. not everybody's going to die. So a lot of the sus the suspense is gone. Yeah, I know why they did that though. They have to front load it with a bunch of talking. Well, yeah, of course. Because they have to hold back. Yeah. You know what I mean? For, they have to for, wait like for wait the monster to like for the monsters. That's what they're doing. If not, it would be very short, which is dumb. They should have never done that. Yeah, they you need to get people involved like yeah. in the shit like right away. It's fifties thinking. Put more monsters in it. Give them their money's worth. You know. They're like, we can't afford more monsters. They could, though. All they had to do is just make the scenes longer with the rat spider, and just the rat spider did some, could do some more stuff. You could, and then the other thing that, you know what I mean? There, there, there's, there were opportunities to do a lot more interaction. You probably could have got an extra 20 minutes of monsters. They you probably right. could, to yeah. be honest with you. They just didn't know how to film action. I mean, because once the monsters were made, yeah. like you said, you could just do more them. shit with them, them rather yeah. than having... Because this actually does open yeah. with your standard 50s monster movie yeah. group of old white dudes right. sitting around a table talking about... Uh, they had this manned mission to Mars. I don't know what year it was supposed to be. Did they say? No. Um, 50s, I think. Well, I mean, because usually you see a movie and it's supposed to be like, ooh, it's the 80s. It's like the future. Yeah. We're going to Mars and shit like that. But I don't know if they said it was like the future or anything. The drawing, it did get some shit right. The drawings of the rockets actually looked pretty good. Yeah, okay. that's what I, yeah, I thought. And they, they did, did kind of call it, I used to laugh that, that the 50s rockets always landed on their tails. Yeah. Now that we got Elon Musk, that motherfucker, yeah, they land on their tails. That's how you do it. Well, but, for a long time, we did think that was dumb because it's yeah. like, well, the only rockets reason they did land. that was because, like I said, it was a yeah. drawing. So they were just kind of like, woo. That, <laughs> that and they would make a fucking, uh, a stupid set and they had to get, go in and out of it all the time. And, you know, and if you're going to travel in a rocket, Back in these days, rockets were multi-staged, and it just ended up with a capsule. The the, the idea of you going to a place in a rocket, in a whole coming big ass back rocket, in yeah. that same bass fucking rocket, was an impossibility. So we we would laugh at that, but it's not impossible now. <laughs> no, but I mean, like back then, I'm back guessing. Then it was. Like I said, yeah. you know, if this these are mostly like geared toward little kids, so I yeah. think they wouldn't have really like grasped right. the. The nuances of, you know, we only have the rocket to get us out of the Earth's atmosphere. Like, yeah. once you're out there, you just need the yeah. capsule bit. You know what I mean? It so, was a reach, man, to get somewhere and back in a rocket back in those days. Yeah. It was more plausible if they did like what you did on Forbidden Planet. They would travel around to all these planets in a flying saucer. That made a whole lot more sense. Because you're not confined to the rocket concept. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like they should have done more... 
like earthlings going yeah. places and yeah. playing saucers. And you know, Star Trek was kind of based and inspired on Forbidden Planet. Was inspired it. That's why the Enterprise is a fucking flying saucer. It's a flying saucer with some shit with, added to with it. some shit on the but back. It started. It's a flying saucer. <laughs> it's fifties thinking stuff. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But that's cool. That's yeah. I mean, it's that's an iconic fucking design. Yeah. But yeah, this just had your standard '50s rocket that looks kind of like a tampon applicator. Yeah. Uh, or you know, like a big yeah. pen or a big pen or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So uh, okay. So what happened? There's a manned mission to Mars. There was four uh, people on it, and it apparently they okay. So like the the white guys on the ground, the, the white guys in suits on the ground, they lost contact with this ship so they were assuming like something bad happened or they're all dead or whatever but then at the beginning of the movie they find the the rocket kind of just floating out in the atmosphere and they're like whoa well i'll be damned uh i don't remember if they said like how long it had been but it had been a while and they're just like well we got to go get that shit like and see if they're still in there and they bring the cat the rocket back to the earth and uh, the first thing that comes out, like, there's actually a, a woman scientist on there named Iris, and she's a biologist, I think. And she's kind of the first one out, and it's so fucking funny. I was like, this is so 50s. It's so fucking funny. She was one of, like, four crews. The other three were dudes, obviously. But she comes out the thing, like, they're leading her out, because, you know, it's, like, a tragic, you know, thing that happened. And all of the dudes that are, like, the, the military police and all that were like, the girl and they all like run over there like fuck the radiation we're gonna go like see some fucking titties or whatever i don't know what the fuck it was just like really funny so uh she lived and she seems to be okay although she's pretty traumatized and also the captain tom banyan i think his name was uh he's also alive but he's kind of fucked up he looks like he's got like some green jello shit like all over his arms he got blobbed he got blobbed essentially yeah uh so yeah so that's like the beginning part so they put him in the hospital to see but they don't like quarantine him or nothing they weren't like thinking about that in the 50s even though he clearly brought like some alien jello back with him yeah you would think that they would just like contain it's like nobody would touch him they would contain her too yeah they were worried about that they were worried they're like whatever (laughs) just make sure he has some tylenol yeah (laughs) it's it's fine it's a 50s he's suck it up. Yeah, spray it. <laughs> spray the back to eat on there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so there's that. So so he's kind of like unconscious and like all blobbed out or whatever. You don't think I'm lying about spraying it. Don't you remember the fucking Star Trek? The hypo was... Yeah. They sprayed it. That's what they're doing. It's fucking back team, man. It's 50 seconds. It things. fixes everything. It fixes everything. You just kind of put it up there and goes... Psh. Yeah, there, there you go. Goes. There it goes. You can't just High gone. tech, man. You can't just gone. High tech. So your irritable bowel syndrome is gone. Your migraine is gone. Yeah. Whatever. The fifties were a fuck. They were the fucking trip, man. They were a fucking. Trip. They were so optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were working with what they had, so they were just extrapolating. We have this, so therefore, in the future, it'll be it'll be even a better version of this. Yeah. You know the idea. That they didn't think on. that it was like a completely different. Like, yeah, concept things going which... obsolete and replaced. Well, most people other, don't. Other think. technologies. You don't think they didn't think like that, but we don't think that way. No, nobody does. Right, yeah. Like I said, well, not nobody, but like a couple people do, but right. not that many. But yeah, so uh, so he's all blobbed and he can't talk. So they don't really know what happened because like all the tapes that they made of like the voyage have been erased. Uh, but Iris is okay. She's just, like, really traumatized and is having trouble, trouble, like, remembering. So they give her something? Like, truth serum or something like that? She's kind of wigging out, like, being a woman and stuff, like, in the, like, in the yeah. 50s movie. But, uh, uh, but eventually they do get enough out of her, like, she remembers enough to, like, tell them about what happened on the voyage. Yeah. So then it goes into, like, a flashback. Yeah. And I think there's one point in there, too, where they kind of go back to, come back to the present again, but it's almost all a flashback. Yeah, it's, and, and then they, they got it. There, there's plenty of bitch be crazy scenes in this. Oh my god, so many. There's a part where it basically it says <laughs> this bitch be, bitch be crazy let's drug her up and we'll get some sense out of her that's fucking yeah, that I mean, that's not exactly what he said that's what it meant though but that's, that's what yeah. it, bitches be crazy so let's give what her some what the doctor said and, and we'll get some sense out of her was kind of like yeah that's yeah, that's yeah. what he meant yeah <laughs> He just said it like in a nicer way. <laughs> yeah, we were watching that, and I was just gonna, and I laughed. And Tom's like, "Oh, okay, bitches be crazy, but we yeah. have to drug her to get some sense out of her." I'm like, that's "Yeah, exactly that's what he said. Like, that's what he said." 
I mean, I will give this, like, it's fairly progressive for 1959 for having an actual, like, woman doctor that's a biologist, like, on the ship, who actually ends up at the end, spoiler alert, like, kind of solving the problem, like, ends up um, figuring out what uh, what cures the, the blob disease that Captain Tom has. So she does actually do shit, and she has agency. But there is still, like, you know, it's still 1959, so she's still going to get, like, you know, comments about her butt and shit like that, like, on the fucking... They, they gave her comments about her butt? Well, um, okay. Kind of, huh? One of the, yeah. Uh, a, the, another thing that... <laughs> one of the, the, the bouncer guy, I call him the bouncer, I can't yeah. remember. He was, what the fuck did he do on the ship? He was, like, he the, was, com- he was he the was comic relief. Leno. He was the comic relief. He was Jay Leno. I called him, like, I called him, I was like, I'm just the bouncer. Because yeah, he started, yeah. like, he was, like, a Brooklyn. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck he was doing on there. He, he had was, a ray gun. He was reading comic books and had a freeze ray that he was really into. Yeah. And I mean. It was a freeze ray, is that the call? Yeah. Okay. And I mean, so into it, he had, it was named Cleo. Yeah. He and I'm, Cleo. And I'm yeah. pretty sure that he probably, I, I, allegedly, that he probably fucked it. <laughs> I mean, it was that, it was that level. It was, it was more 50s thinking. Yeah. Okay? The world, uh, there's a <laughs> lot of World War II in this. Oh right? yeah, big world, time. World War II had a heavy influence on these people. It's, it's, it's a man portable, man pack ray gun. Okay. That shoots out a fucking blast, a freeze blast. Well, that's a futuristic sci-fi interpretation of a flamethrower, a World War II flamethrower. Yeah. It's just in the, It's so high tech that it's not hot. It's now cold. Not real. Not real creative, but okay. I mean, technically, it doesn't shoot out anything. You don't. It see, just makes an annoying beeping sound. Yeah, but you know that's kind of cool because that's <laughs> yeah. the way a laser is. You don't really see the beam. You that's just see true. the fucking impact of fucking pow. Big, but like I said, also and, very economical yeah, for economical. movie filming purposes. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of looks like a Browning 1919 fucking machine gun with a buttstock on it and a, and a man pack on the back of it with a cord. And it has a, the sight is just a damn aircraft fucking ring with a fucking yeah. crosshair in it. It doesn't have a front sight I mean, you could say, Yeah, they just like built it out yeah, of just parts. Built. It, 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 yeah, and it has like a thumb hole stock and everything. It looks like almost kind of like some of a dragon off. It's kind of a and cool goes, looking... Beep! Yeah, beep. And he, <laughs> and the, the fucking rat, Sorry. the rat spider attacks him, and it fucking blows the irises out of the fucking rat. And he spider. goes, no. Ah! It's actually that was actually the best part of the movie. Uh, and that was the part where I said, if I'd seen this when I was a little kid, I would have yeah, shit yeah. my pants at that. Yeah. That's scary looking. Yeah. I think it's kind of especially scary back in those still, days. If you were like a little kid, yeah, especially back in those days. I felt so bad for like the rat bat spider creature. The though. rat spider, in reality, was probably about the size of a football with legs on it. It was a marionette. Yeah, it was like a marionette. Yeah, and um, you could tell that, but but I think it like, cool though. Yeah, like and the yeah. fact that they shot it like through that weird filter yeah. and like all the red and like the weird polarization and stuff, it actually gave it a really weird like otherworldly. Yeah, and because it moved like a marionette, kind of like yeah. that. And it had like weird crab legs. Right. And it was kind of like, you know what it reminded me of? I know you you didn't see this movie, but I reviewed a movie like not too long ago called Possum. It's like a yeah. British movie about this super creepy um, like ventriloquist or mm-hmm. yeah, like a puppeteer. And he had a puppet that was like a spider, like spider legs, but with like kind of a mannequin head on it. Yeah. And it kind of reminded me of that. It's like, it yeah. has like a weird, like unsettling This is the look funny, to it. funny thing, you know, Jenny was saying, well, you know, they had to save these monster scenes because of the money i think they thought so but i don't think they really thought it through because when you the padding you have to pay these people to do acting and to show up and to commute there to the fucking studio although maybe that's part of it part of it was that you had to pay actors yeah, that might have been because it's a grift yeah um but you could have saved your money by getting rid of a couple of the of, of, of the actors and streamlined the story down where it was mostly monsters and shot them all on the same screen in a shorter period of time and had a movie with nothing but just monster jam packed full of fucking monsters. Monsters eating. Because eating. making marionettes, you know, not that expensive. No. And the background was just painted. Yeah, they said that cost about a hundred bucks. Yeah. So <laughs> I, had I been make, producing this movie and directing it, it would have been mostly monsters. The kids would have fucking loved it. Wall to wall monster action. And it would be basically the first thing they do when they get to Mars is kill some shit. They shoot some fucking plants with the damn death ray. And I'm, <laughs> remember that shit? I know. They well, show up and then they, let's kill some shit. 
They, they, they well, like I said, they dick around on the rocket yeah. ship for a while. Yeah. And yeah. then they're like looking out, and there's like vegetation on Mars. It was 1959, y'all. Like a lot of vegetation, like a jungle, essentially. And they're they're saying shit like, well, there's all these plants out there, but they're not moving, like implying yeah. that there's no wind, yeah. which for some reason leads them to make a very large logical leap yeah. that, oh, well, there must be some greater intelligence controlling the vegetation because it yeah. doesn't move. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird things. And I was just kind of like, what what happened in between those two points? I'm not yeah. really getting... I'm not getting that. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's all these fucking plants. So they finally get off the ship, and the first thing they do is they find like a plant. They're like, huh, that's interesting. Pow! Yeah, yeah. And then and they then kill they, it. It works. It's dead. Yeah, and then he sits there like he's a brave And then he's all like smug he, and yeah, shit. Yeah, like I killed it. I killed and I cactus. went, USA! USA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I would have gone with that shit, though. <laughs> this movie would have basically been called America, fuck yeah, we're here to destroy Mars. <laughs> I'd have been showing it, we've been fighting monsters the whole time. Our America, fuck Mars. That yeah, America, been. fuck Mars. <laughs> we're the That'd shit. That'd have been more like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Punchy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there, there was, uh, um, I could have made this fucking a lot better. Well, yeah. It would have been a survival horror on Mars. And, and it's because first thing they do is they come off the rocket and they shoot the fucking plants. And little did they know the plants are all in communication with each other and they're animals, actually. And they have intelligence. So they killed somebody's pookie. And then all the fucking... <laughs> the planet rises up against them. And then they have to survive. It takes like, them the a fuck off our yeah, planet, Get off the fuck off planet. And in the end, you know, just like in this movie, the aliens say, you know, get the fuck off of Mars. Don't ever come back here. That's basically Just what, stay on your own fucking on your planet. Own planet. We've been watching. Blow your own shit up. We've been watching y'all. Y'all are shit bags. Stay <laughs> on your planet. Which is what the stay aliens Stay way over there. Yeah. yeah there is a city on this planet. Yeah, but I mean, it's painted, it's so they, so they don't go to it. They yeah. just kind of like see it from far away, and they're yeah. like, woo, neat, and then yeah, they, hey, get civilization. they get attacked by a giant blob monster and yeah. have to like run back to the ship. Yeah, but, I was doing this. But what I was going to say, like, there's, okay, so there's two things where we were saying, where we were saying about Iris, the woman scientist, um, getting, well, because the, the bouncer, Jay Leno guy, yeah. did say something about two moons, like referring to her butt, I'm pretty sure, or okay. her tits, could have been yeah. either thing. Yeah. So there was that. That's okay. Um, That's acceptable. The, her and Captain Tom were in kind of like a little uh, thing, like a little flirtation type shit. Yeah. Now, he was played by, I think his name's Gerald Moore, and I was like, man, I know that dude. He's really familiar. And I was like, I must have seen him in some other movie that was on MST. And indeed, I did. It was Invasion USA, not the Chuck Norris one. Yeah. Uh, this one was like a Cold War like a uh, Russian infiltration one. It came yeah. out in 1952 and I knew him from that, but he's been in like a fuck ton. Go to his Wikipedia page. And he's been, he was in all the movies, like going yeah. back to the forties. But one thing, okay. So he's like kind of, he has a huge forehead by the way. <laughs> and I kept like pointing it. He looks a little bit like, um, like, um, what's his, what's his ass? Uh, yeah. shit. Uh, I'll think of it in a sec. Humphrey Bogart. He looks a little bit like that. Um, but with a bigger forehead and a little more rumply. But, um, he was like, he was a little bit creepy in this. He's, okay, so her thing is that her name is Iris and she has like super red hair. So you're presuming that she's Irish. So he just keeps calling her Irish and she kind of calls him out on it. Like, why do you keep calling, like, my name is Iris, Iris. Okay. It's like, I, what, what are you calling me? My nationality or my name? And he says to her, when I call your name, you'll know it. Ugh. Like that. And I was just kind of like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, and also, but the funniest line, what I was saying about, like, the weird, like, sexual lines. And I was watching Brandon Tenold did a review of this, too. And he also said the same exact thing that I thought when I was watching this. She's looking out the window. Like, I think this is before they land on Mars. And she says something like, um, talking about a dark tunnel. Like, you know, I thought Broadway was a dark tunnel or something like that. And he says something to the effect of, oh, when we get back to Earth, like, uh, we'll explore that dark tunnel together. Yeah. I'm like, dude, are you talking about her vagina? Yeah, Because yeah. that's pretty much what it sounded like. Yeah. And I was glad that, like, Brandon Tennell backed me up because he said the same thing. Are you talking about her vagina? I'm like, oh, my God, that's exactly what I thought. All the damn innuendo. Because <laughs> yeah, I, like, I was like, wow, that was really dirty for, like, 1959. Because he said it, like, real scuzzy, and he was, like, kind of rubbed up on her and stuff. And I was just like, oh, my God. All right. So, so yeah, so they dick around the spaceship. There's also a professor, by the way, who has a Van Dyke and looks, like, a little bit like the devil. Yeah. And, uh... Well, like I said, you were saying that, like, they could have had not so many actors, but I was like, well, I would submit to you that they at least needed, like, 
the the love the two love interest people who lived and then you needed some more cannon fodder because you needed like some other people to get eaten by the monsters right yeah okay then there should have just been less acting yeah. Stop with all the Stop acting. All the it's, there's and too acting. much just go there and get killed. Because there are a few scenes in this yeah. where they're just kind of like, "Hey, we're gonna go out on Mars uh, in a little while, but we're just gonna like hang out in here." The, the problem with the movie is that this, basically the story is very, very basic, and the dialogue and the personal inter interaction between the people is just really kind of dumb. There's not a lot of content there. It'd have been better if it was just like mission oriented. Let's get there. Let's get fucked up. Let's escape and get the hell out. More action. But the fifties did not know how to shoot an action movie. There was no such thing as an action movie, really. Probably the closest to an action movie would be a western. Back yeah. in the fifties, like I said, they, and they really didn't have a lot. Of they action. really did put a lot of like scenes of like talking. unnecessary scenes of like people talking to one That's, another. I guess that was the expectations of the culture of the time too. Is it was kind of a theater vaudeville type base, so you sit around and make fucking wisecracks and joke around and you know uh, talk about what it is you're gonna do. Don't do it. You're gonna talk about what you're gonna do. Yeah. You're like, yeah, we're gonna go to Mars. Okay, we're going to Mars next week. You know, oh, to go to Mars, we have to do this and this and that. And we have to get the front something there and a shield or nothing. All the fucking bugs. <laughs> and, uh, so, how are you? When are you getting married? You know, that kind of shit. And that kind of shit is in yeah. the fucking 50s movie, you know. Well, it's like, like I said, characterization in movies. Yeah. Like, you ha yeah, you have to do it because you want people to, like, care about the characters. But it can be done, like, a lot more briefly than just having everybody, yeah. like, sit around talking about bullshit. Right. For a long time. But I will say that once they actually get out and you get, like, the crazy Mars shit... It's actually pretty cool. Like I yeah. said, most of the backdrops uh, were all uh, hand painted. Like obviously they made some of the plants because one of the plants tries to eat Iris, uh, and there's that. But what they did was they shot those parts in black and white, and then they did like a partial polarization on it. So some of the film went uh, from negative to or from the negative went to positive. Yeah. So they just left it like that. But then they exposed it, I think, twice, and they fucked it up because some of the some of the um, places went transparent, which actually wasn't supposed to happen. But then when they did the red tint over it, they thought it looked kind of cool. So if you yeah. look at it, like you can see, because I noticed this when I was watching it, because I'm a graphic designer, so I know how some of this stuff works. But um, you, you could see like where the where some of the shit was blown out. Like it was red, but then it was like yellow, like a yeah. really bright yellow, like in some of the whiter areas. And that's what happened. They just like overexposed it. But they thought it looked cool, so they were like, fuck it, we're just yeah, gonna leave it. Yeah, it's kinda artistic looking. Yeah, I thought it looked kinda cool. So once kinda like tie dye in one color. Once they get out but here's the thing though, I feel like they weren't on Mars long enough. Like they yeah. get out and then they shoot a plant and then Iris almost gets eaten by another bigger plant, and then yeah. they're like, okay, well, let's go back to the ship. I'm like, seriously, don't go yeah. back to the ship, come on. Yeah. Um, you just got out here. And then they go out again, and then they find like a lake, and then they start boating into the lake, and they see the city, and they're like, wow, holy shit, yeah. look at that. And then like this big, huge blob thing. Like a sea blob. Like a sea blob, like comes out, and it has like a weird, like, <laughs> it had like a weird filter feeding thing on the front yeah, it looked yeah. like and it actually because they were like well shit now we gotta get out of the water so they get out of the water but then they're like oh the dude's amphibious right and he yeah. just comes blobbing yeah. like on the land after them and then it tries to eat their ship yeah it surrounds it. which i thought was actually pretty cool so it's all like goopy and shit and then yeah. like the the gets brooklyn the, the brooklyn jay leno dude uh gets absorbed yeah and actually if you think about it this is pretty fucked up because they actually show like the blob kind of pulsating and yeah. then like you can see his little body in there like it's yeah. being digested and i'm yeah. like ah it's yeah. not gross but thinking about it is like kind of fucked yeah. up so he, they, but he, they got that from the blob. Yeah, I think. Yeah. But like, it, so he gets eaten. But then, the, well, the dumb thing is that the professor. I kind of feel like the professor should have got eaten by the rat bat spider monster, which is awesome. I really do like that monster. Like the look of it. Like I said, it was just some cheap fucking puppet that they made. It looked. But cool. it looked cool. Like you could tell it was a puppet, obviously, yeah. because like it just moved like it was on a string. But I think like the red, just all the whole red filter and the whole look of it, like made it look really creepy. It had a face, had little hands and stuff, you know. So it kind of yeah. had a personality. They're doing it. It's a marionette. It's probably about that big around. I think it was fourteen inches. 14 That's inches? what I read. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's I I heard that it was fourteen inches. Yeah, I'd have made I I'd have right. made several creatures like that. I, I'd have had all kinds of fun. It'd been a whole fucking Mars movie. The movie that should have, 90% of it, this should have been on Mars and the survival horror. 
That's yeah, and I mean, like I said, as yeah. soon as they got to Mars, they should have got their asses off the fucking ship and started yeah. exploring stuff, because that's what you would do. Like, yeah. why would you go all the way to Mars and then dig yeah. around in the spaceship, like, playing cards? That's what or the audience the wants to see. Or reading comic they books wouldn't, like they Jay They wouldn't Leno dive into the shit and really show an audience what they wanted to see. For some reason, they just, they didn't think that way. They're making they like, well, well, we have to work if we do that. That's like, yeah. Well, fucking show us some marionettes. Well, man. maybe the gu- maybe the guys making it where you know, back in my day when we had to walk three miles uphill, yeah. like in the snow, like for movies, we didn't. Nothing happened. In yeah, the nothing movies. happened in a whole movie. <laughs> now, now you want everything to happen in the movie. <laughs> you damn kids. Yeah. That's maybe that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, maybe. He's like, here you go, here's your monster. Fuck off. Nothing happened in yeah, our yeah. movies. God damn it. Well, one thing I did want to say is that I was kind of bummed out that like, okay, so you know, Brooklyn J. Leno gets absorbed by the Blob, which is great. I mean, you know, yeah. but um. He got eaten by one of the monsters. I think it would have been better if the professor, Professor Van Dykebeard, or Professor Devil as we were calling him, yeah. um, even though he was a nice man, but he kind of looked like the devil. I kind of wish that he had been eaten by the Ratbat Spider Monster because the Ratbat Spider Monster didn't really, he got blinded, but he didn't eat anybody. He was just kind of like there trying. and he yeah. got, he was trying to eat him. Yeah. But the professor just like died of a heart attack, right? Like uh, on the ship. Yeah, I guess so, didn't he? Yeah, because everything was just too much for him because he was right. like an older guy and he's yeah. just like, I can't take it, blah. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's funny. And I was just kind of like, yeah, you had all those monsters. Come yeah. on, why didn't it pop his head off? It was 1959. They're going to show yeah. him popping his head off. But you know what I mean? You could have like at least had the monsters They didn't have that. a technology to have the puppet eat anybody. Eat, eat anybody else. That's like, true. It would have looked, looked, looked really bad, yeah. I guess. I mean, they could have just implied. They could have yeah. like put him over like that and had the guy go, ah, and then yeah. like you cut away like, oh, God, right, he popped yeah. his head off. That's yeah. what they would have done in the 50s you know what i mean that's budget shit i you know i know that but uh yeah so i kind of feel like that i was another thing i was gonna say too when you were talking about like the whole bitches be crazy thing back then the first time that you see a monster which we haven't talked about like the the kind of bipedal monster that looks kind of like kind of like a kind of like a damn bipedal uh what does it look like a frog and a crustacean yeah it's kind of like interesting three-eyed crawfish so you see him briefly like outside the spaceship's window like not long after they get there like kind of go woo and it's green and uh iris because she's a woman even though she's a scientist she screams and like kind of passes out and shit and then they're like she's like there was a fucking and she was kind of like just trying to describe it like it was this horrible face with like three eyes like she described it pretty good and then like the the dude captain tom says to her oh but there's nothing there now which means that you there was never that. anything yeah. there yeah she was like it was right fucking there yeah. you know what i mean it could have run away yeah and you i'm know? like and i'm like yeah <laughs> we're on an alien planet there's nothing out there <laughs> right it, you know there can't be anything out there this is mars there's nothing out there she was very fainty for a scientist yeah, yeah, yeah. gotta say but yeah so there was that oh and oh and also there was a thing where she climbed up to the top level of the spaceship which is where the bunks were and there was this big crash and everybody's like what the fuck was that and she's like oh i'm so clumsy i fell and like you know dropped a tray of test tubes or something and that's where that crash was oh women yeah you scientists you can't even walk properly but it's like like i said they did like there's some of that in the movie but i've seen like way worse examples like in 50s this was actually like not too bad and like i said at the end she actually is the one that figures out because they have all these people all these doctors and stuff trying to figure out like when they got captain tom back to earth like how to get the blob shit off his arm and she's the one that actually figures out how to do it because the doctors are like we don't know um but she's the one that actually figures out how to do it like to kill it with electroshock or whatever the hell but she's the one that figures it out so she does actually like uh have kind of a part in it but we just thought that was very funny uh but yeah so this is actually we got the idea to watch this because they just put it on amazon prime not too long ago and you you remembered it because you'd seen it with your dad and i was pretty sure that i had never seen it and i was kind of like that sounds kind of cool and i remember i vaguely remembered like hearing about the gimmick about it like the cinemagic thing where it was red and everything and uh and i of course knew about the cover of the misfits uh iconic 1982 album walk among us which has the rat bat spider creature on it so if you ever wanted to know where that monster's from it's from angry red planet but yeah so it's not like i said it's not a great 50s sci-fi film um and it's pretty slow like it takes a while like to get going even though it's pretty short but um it's actually once they get to mars it's actually pretty cool i, I kind of had a good time with it you know what i mean if you're in the mood for 50s sci-fi there are other ones you should see first 
Yeah. This is one that you see if you've seen the other ones. Yeah, this one's not right. like essential 50s right. sci-fi viewing. Right. But... For 50s essential, the very first one I'd say probably War of the Worlds. Then right after that, you'd want to see uh, Forbidden Planet. And then after that, you'd want to see The Day the Earth Stood Still. And then after that, maybe The Thing, the old 50s The Thing. Yeah, The Thing from Another World. Thing though. from Another World, yeah. yeah. Um, and then maybe this one. Yeah. Uh, there might be some other ones, though, you might want to see. Uh, uh, yeah, like I said, I kind of feel like this one's B this or C tier. Just... It's still pretty entertaining. Yeah. Especially if you really like the 50s sci-fi vibe and you don't mind it being really slow. Yeah. Um, and you like the gimmicks because I really I kind of like the gimmicks. I'm not gonna lie. I put the blob over this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, but as, actually the gimmick in this one is actually really good because I do think that it looks cool. Like when yeah. they go to Mars and it's like it, it really does look weird and like otherworldly because it's like red and that it's like fucking hand drawn yeah. and you know the monsters are cool looking and shit like that even though they're obviously like really cheap. But I think they get did a good job with what they had. I think this only cost two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, make. well, shit. But yeah, <laughs> might have been a little bit more. But I it's, remember it wasn't Robinson Crusoe on Mars being good. That was the one where the guy he shows up. He's got a monkey, and the monkey's in a little spacesuit. Remember the little yeah, that's monkey? right. And they're trying to survive. He's drink. He's he, he's he's breathing the monkey's oxygen. Out of a little. I remember that. Okay, yeah. I did see that one then. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the same director. I'm pretty sure that was that's the Danish same movie you're talking about. I remember liking it. I don't remember. That's the only thing I remember about it, though, is him sharing oxygen with the with the I have to watch that one again one of these yeah. days. There's a lot yeah. of... Uh, but yeah, this is definitely a good B or C tier, uh, you know, 50s sci-fi. It's yeah. a good time. We had a good time with it, especially yeah. like all the weird like sexual innuendo. Yeah. And, and the Brooklyn J. Leno guy like with his weird ammosexual yeah, thing. He's a, with, yeah, he's ammosexual. <laughs> with, yeah. his, with his gun Cleo. <laughs> and I'm just like... I know. Like, uh, yeah, well, like, is he going to stick his dick in that? Because I'm leaving. <laughs> that, was, that was World War II talking. That I was That, that was kind of like some dude who's fucking glad to have been, to have been a flamethrower man out there on fucking... The Isle of fucking Iwo Jima or fucking, you know, <laughs> during the island campaigns. Yeah, it was something like yeah. that. But yeah, it's pre it was pretty entertaining, I thought. But yeah, so uh, it's on Amazon Prime for free at the moment if you want to watch it. So uh, let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments. And we will see you guys on the next one. Bye.